Welcome back to the wizard shop. What looks like an EKG machine actually kind of is. We're actually going to check this thing out. I'm going to show you guys the ins and outs of an oscilloscope right after this. Behind me is a 66 Mustang with actually a 5.0. It's kind of a resto mod. The owner of this car is really intelligent, really beautiful, really nice person. And we're going to be using his car to show you guys an oscilloscope today. Autel has actually hooked me up with this system. It's an MS908 and it has an MP408 oscilloscope as part of the package. I, I got the screen, but they set me up with this equipment and we're going to show you guys what you can do with one of these. When you get an older vehicle in the shop, you can't hook a diagnostic tool to it. The next best thing is you have to hook up all these wires all to the various sensors and get the readings and make a judgment based on that. Let me show you guys what all I have hooked up and then we'll take a look at the actual unit itself. I only have a few sensors hooked up just to show you guys what it looks like and how it works, but I have this little inductor that can see the ignition through, through the shielding of the spark plug wire. You can kind of see it firing. We've back probed the, the mass airflow sensor and we've also got a little pigtail hooked into an injector so we can look at the, the signature off of one of the fuel injectors. This is a, so let's show you guys what you can do with one of these and some of the readings that you can get. If you don't want to just throw parts at a car, which I don't do, I don't, I don't enjoy doing that, you have to have data to show is this part good, is this part bad. Then you can go from there and make a decision. Let's take a look at the unit. This is actually a scan tools MS908S. Uh, I'll show you guys here. It's got Maxisys on it and you guys are familiar with one of these. I had a smaller model. This has all the different vehicles you can use it as a scan tool, but we're going to use the software that's included called Maxiscope. As you can see it's four channels. It can look at four different readings at the same time, which could be four different sensors or whatever it is you're trying to troubleshoot. And it'll show it on a graph and show you the reading that you're getting. You kind of have to know what the wiring and things, what you're looking at and what does what. You can't just plug it in and go. You have to know what kind of what you're doing. But like I said, in a, in a situation where there's no diagnostic port, this is what you use to see the actual data yourself. So I'm going to start the vehicle. We'll start with channel one and work our way down. I'll just kind of show you what the signatures look like. That'll pretty much finish up showing this off. I know you guys don't like ads, but this is a very powerful tool to have in a shop. I actually have a small little snap on one that I've been using for a long time. It's nice to have a full blown setup here. So I'll start the car and we'll start with channel one. So I'll have to kind of talk kind of loud so you guys can hear me. It's got a supercharged 302 in it, so it's kind of loud and whiny. I, sorry, I can't help that. This is an airflow signature at idle. It's just kind of showing the, the readings you get from that. As you rev it up, hit the gas, this will raise up and change the voltages. So if you're trying to test an airflow sensor and you want to actually get a reading from it, is it good, is it bad? It should be reading so much voltage at RPMs, and there's kind of a table you can use to, to check that out. But that's pretty much what you'll see with an airflow sensor. Now let's switch over to the next channel. This here is what we see is a fuel injector. One of the fuel injectors. I have a little pigtail that kind of plugs in line with the fuel injector. And as you can see, each little tick is the firing of the fuel injector. I can change some of the settings on here. There we go. You can change the different settings on here and zoom in or zoom out on the actual signature that you're getting. If you were able to see in between each one of these, you can actually see like a kickback of the coil inside the injector firing. So you'll be able to see that it is firing, it is working, it's in sequence. And that way you can know that injector is working. If it was just a flat line or dead, you know nothing's going on there. Let's move on to the next one. This is kind of like the old oscilloscopes you'd find on the sun machines in a shop when you would check individual, uh, individual spark plug wires to see if it's firing. It's kind of hard for it to read it because it's firing so fast. But if you get the timing just right, you can actually pause this and you can kind of take a look at it 
can see it fires and kind of goes down to, to nothing. That's the cylinder firing every time. So let's go back to the injector channel. You can set this machine up to look at different sen all kinds of different sensors, but you need to know is it a 5 volt sensor, a 12 volt sensor, a 1 volt sensor, like an oxygen sensor would be 0 to 1 volts and it would kind of be a sine wave. But you would change the settings. Right here you can change the time, time frame on it, you can change all the different voltages you would use, you can do AC volt, DC volt. You just set it up basically on what you're looking at. I'm going to turn the vehicle off here, it's getting kind of smelly in here. So that's basically, I'm not going into detail all the readings I will get, I'm not diagnosing this car. I'm just showing you that you can hook up different sensors, you can get different readings, and based on what you should be reading and what you're actually reading, you can make a decision. Is this sensor bad? Is there a wiring problem? Is there a ground problem? Is something going on here? If you're working on an older car, especially that doesn't have a diagnostic port, this is essential to have in the shop because Without this, you're kind of going in blind and you're kind of just throwing parts at it, swapping parts. Well, maybe it's an auction sensor or maybe it's an airflow sensor. Maybe, maybe it's a bad fuel injector or this or that. You really don't want to be doing that, guys, because especially on the older vehicles that I have in the shop sometimes, the parts are two or three days or sometimes a week out. You can't wait a week to find out if that part's going to fix it or not. And when you do find them, they're not going to be cheap. They're going to be expensive. You don't want to just say, oops, there's 100 bucks. Ooh, there's 200 bucks, and that didn't fix it. You can't do it that way. This is where you have an oscilloscope, when you can get into the sensors and see, okay, it should be reading this, but it's actually reading that. I know for a fact that's a bad sensor. And that's where this tool is gold. That's where it really shines. That's what it's meant for. Now, as we get into some vehicles that actually have some problems, this one doesn't have any problems. I'm going to be showing you guys specifically how to hook up that specific sensor that I'm testing and the reasons I should be getting and the, what I'm actually getting and we'll make a decision on that. I'll actually show you in depth. Right now I'm just showing you the, the tool, basics of the tool and how awesome it is to use. The next thing we're going to show you is that when you're done oscilloscoping and you want to check a different vehicle, you don't have to just rip all this stuff apart. This is called the VCI. It's Bluetooth basically. You plug it into the diagnostic port and set this on the dash. There's no cables. You can walk away and it'll read everything through here wirelessly. So we've got Mrs. Wizard's Land Rover Discovery Sport. We're going to plug it in and show you guys this. Okay, we've got that hooked up. Now we're finished with the oscilloscope. I showed you guys all the different things you can do with it, the basics of it. Now we're going to move on to actual diagnosis using a OBD2 port. We're working on a Land Rover. Now I'm doing all this, I didn't have to unhook everything. I can still use it as a scan tool right here, wirelessly. So it picked up her VIN. It'll be able to decipher what vehicle it is based off of that. It's Discovery Sport 2015 Turbo 2.0, yes. I want to show you guys, with, with a diagnostic port, you can see all this information without all these wires being strung everywhere. Go to live data. It's loading all the different data sets. Here we see tons and tons of data. You have to scroll through and find out what you want. But let's find some information that we'd like to see. There we go. And here we have a graph, just like we were looking at a minute ago, but we don't have wires strung everywhere. That's the nice thing about a diagnostic port. The computer's reading all this stuff, and it can give you the information running th straight through the computer, straight through that VCI, and into this unit here. When you don't have a diagnostic port, but you want to see this data, this is what you have to use. You have to use an oscilloscope. 
and sometimes you use it even on a modern car. If you have something that doesn't have a data PID, you're going to have to hook up your oscilloscope and read it manually anyway. You can see your oxygen sensor working, the ambient temperature sensor voltage, charge air temperature voltage, turbo charger percentage, wastegate. All that information is readily available with a OBD2 port. When it's not, it's basically an EKG machine. And if you go to a shop with a newer car, it's faster for a mechanic. He can go through and say, oh yeah, blah, 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 you know, look at the data and make a decision real fast. If you bring in a 1986 Mustang GT and the OBD2 port's pretty much useless and the mechanic needs all this information, you're going to pay for it, guys. I guarantee you I'm not going to get all this stuff broke out for 30 bucks. You're probably going to pay 130, maybe even more. And I've, I've come across this that people don't want to pay the diagnostic fee, so I don't get that stuff out and I say good luck. This information is very, very vital. This is a very powerful tool, as you've seen, on a newer car or on an older car. This one unit right here can get answers for you. If you're interested in any other tools I use in the shop, check my Amazon Affiliates page in the link below. Also, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We've got many more cool videos to come. Check my Auto Trader Oversteer articles. I've got several articles written already and many more to come. You guys don't want to miss those. There's information in there that I don't put in my YouTube channel. And just like I said a minute ago, we're going to be using this guy a lot. I want to show you guys what it can do and the power of this tool. The next car I get in the shop, it's an older vehicle. It's got sensor issues. We're going to go in depth with this tool. So thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Mm -hmm.